Here we are, second video, part two for the Garden Party Club Gray subscription pattern. This is actually gonna to be to make the top with the peplum. So if you're interested in seeing this construction, then come on along. We're gonna go ahead and start part two of the Garden Party pattern construction. We completed earlier the paneled skirt and now we're gonna work on the actual short sleeve top with the peplum at the waist. So we're gonna put the pattern cover to the side and I'll put the link below to the virtual doll convention where you can still access this pattern and also to our website. And then let's review the pieces that we're gonna be working with. So we have the top front, the top back, the top front facing, the top lining, the peplum, and then also the sleeve. Now for the top facing, you can use that as a contrast or you can actually just use it as the base color of the whole garment. It just depends what your preference is. So let's move a couple of these pieces out of the way and get started. So we're gonna start the way that I always do, which is to take my seam ripper and place a small hole in the top of the darts. In this case, you have two darts in the top front facing, two in the top back, and also two in the front lining. So I already put the hole in there, and then I took my heat uh, transferable marker and I just put a dot on each of the uh, points where that dart is gonna stop. Now, what I'm gonna do first is just set these pieces to the side and work with the top front section. The way that I like to construct my darts is I just like to put a pin where I put that heat erasable marker and then do the dart. In this case, the darts start at a quarter of an inch and then they thin out um, to a very narrow edge. So, so my stitch length is set at um, a two and a half and I'm just gonna start the process from the beginning of the dart up into the point. I'm gonna leave those threads long enough that I can go ahead and tie them off when I take the pieces over to the ironing board. So let's go continue in that way and sew all the darts in the top. Once you have the darts sewn and they're, they're all pressed to the side, you're just gonna go ahead and put the front of the top together with the back at the shoulder seam. Before we take that over to the ironing board, we're gonna go ahead and run, it, run a zigzag stitch on the raw edge of the sleeve cuff. I think it makes a nice finish. The next thing that we're going to do is run a gather stitch between the dots that are indicated on the pattern. Great. From there, we'll take it over to the ironing board and we'll press the shoulder seams open as well as the sleeve edge up a quarter of an inch. Now all we're gonna do is top stitch that uh, sleeve edge.
Next, we're going to just pull that gather stitch so that it actually fits into the armhole edge of the top. Now that we have both the sleeves set in, we're just going to go ahead and trim that seam allowance with the pinking shears. I like the effect of the pinking shears, and since this garment isn't lined through the sleeve, I think it makes a nice finish to uh, this seam edge. All right, now that we have that completed, all we're going to do is sew the front to the back at the side seam and the underarm seam. Okay, now that we have the exterior portion of the top complete, we're gonna go ahead and work on some of the lining pieces. The only thing that I did off camera is I did sew the darts in both front sections as well as in the back section. Now this is actually the top front facing. This is the piece that you would wanna use a contrasting fabric if you chose to do that for the collar area that's gonna open up at the neck. In this case, I'm using white linen and the bodice is actually made out of pink linen. So we're gonna go ahead with that. We're gonna put this right sides together with the front of the top and we're gonna sew this in place. I recommend that you take a few clips into the curved edge before you sew this to the actual front pieces. Once we have the front facing sewn to the front lining, we're gonna go ahead and sew the front to the back at the shoulder seams. The next step is gonna to be to go ahead and run a zigzag stitch around the armhole edge opening of the lining. That's just to give it a more finished look since it doesn't have an actual sleeve lining to the garment. Now that we have that nice finish on the armhole opening of the lining, we're gonna go ahead and sew the front to the back at the side seam. Now we're gonna prepare the peplum. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna pin the lining to the actual peplum. We're gonna sew down the front edge and around the long side of the circle.
Once we have the peplum sewn, all we're gonna do is cut in towards that corner at a 45 degree angle. At this point, you can trim your seam allowance if you'd like to down a little bit, and then do a few cuts in towards this curved edge just to make sure that the peplum turns easier. Then we'll take it over to the ironing board and we'll turn it right side out and get a nice crisp press on that edge. At that time, we'll also turn up the edge of the lining a quarter of an inch, and we'll come back to run a gather stitch across the top edge of the peplum. Now that you have the peplum lining sewn to the peplum and you also have the lining of the bodice turned up a quarter of an inch and hard pressed, we're going to go ahead and finish the construction from here. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to run a gather stitch along the top edge of the peplum and sometimes I use just a single stitch but in this case because it's a double layer I'm going to use a double gather stitch to make sure I get a nice even gather all the way around the front of the top. So let's do that now. And when I do a gather stitch, I'm running it really close to the edge. It's probably about an eighth of an inch from the edge for the first stitch. And then as close as I can get without over running over that um, seam with the second stitch. And I like to run it at about four and a half. Once I have the peplum already prepared, I'm going to go ahead and sew the lining of the top to the top before I actually attach it. So with right sides together, I'm going to match that front area and the seams for the shoulders. Once we have the lining sewn to the bodice, before we do anything, we're just going to double check the back side and make sure we don't have any weird tucks or any puckers that we weren't anticipating and it looks pretty good. So we're going to go ahead and just clip the seams and also the corners um, at the top of the collar, which are here, cutting them in at a 45 degree angle, but not too close to the seam. And then you can go ahead and just take some snips in towards that seam allowance around the round edge of the neck. Once you have those seams trimmed in or clipped in, we're going to go ahead and turn it right side out and give it a good press. Okay, now that we have the garment generally constructed, what we're gonna do is attach the peplum. And the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna identify the center back of the top and the center of the peplum and pin them together, their right sides together first. When you pin the peplum to the front of the top, 
you're going to actually look at the pattern and it's going to be about three quarters of an inch in from the top before you start those gathers. So make sure you're well aware that this starts out flat and then becomes gathered as you go away from the center front. Once you have the gathers all sewn in, you're gonna go ahead and just check the front of the garment to make sure that it all worked out well for you. So it should line up directly with that folded edge of the front and the lining. And then just kind of walk yourself around to see if it worked out to the other side, which also should line up with the front edge of that lining. So it looks good so far. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna press this seam allowance up into the garment, and then we're gonna be able to pull the lining down um, where we've already turned the edge up and finished that waist edge. Once you've had a chance to go ahead and press that seam allowance up from sewing the peplum to the bodice, you're gonna go ahead and take the lining and press it over that seam and go ahead and catch it with some pins. And then you're gonna just hand stitch the lining to that seam allowance and that's gonna finish the inside of the top. So let me go ahead and do that now and then we'll go ahead and try it on Grace and see how it's looking so far. All right, great. So we've finished the top so far. We finished the lining uh, to the ruffle of the peplum at the top. And now all we have to do is try it on the gray stall and determine how close we want these snaps to be or where the snap placement should be. And then we can indicate whether we wanna add some decorative buttons. So let's go ahead and slip it on her and see how it's fitting so far. Now this top does close. So we're gonna have a little bit of an overlap at the front, but it's not a full double breast. So you're gonna line up that waist seam right here, and then that, the top is gonna to flip open at, at the lapel. I'm gonna mark the placements of the snaps with my uh, heat erasable marker, and then I'm gonna go ahead and sew those in place as well as add some decorative buttons, and I think we're almost done. So thanks so much for hanging with me this long. Fantastic. It looks like we've completed another outfit for Grace. This was part two of a two-part series for the garden party pattern for the Club Grace subscription, and we finished it for today. So I think it turned out pretty great. Let's go ahead and get Grace a pair of shoes and maybe a handbag and see how the final outfit turned out. Okay, I can't believe it. This has been a double video kind of day. We've completed both the panel skirt and also the peplum top from the garden party outfit for Club Grace. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and share this video with your friends if the content is interesting to you or interesting to them. I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for coming by.